And now for something completely different. What's up, everybody? This is Blue here at Blue Bears Games, and this week we are doing another budget brew deck build for Commander. This week will be slightly different than normal. Normally, I have the physical deck in my hand, and I go over all the cards. The customer actually already has the deck in hand. Originally, they didn't want a video, and then they changed their mind after they already had the deck. So I'm going to do the strategy guide and the video on the deck now. And as you can see on your screen, it is for a sliver deck, with the commander being the first sliver. So let's go over what the first sliver does, and then we'll get into the deck. So as you can see, the first sliver is a 5 color commander. It's one of each color to cast, and it's a 7-7, seven, seven, just kind of like all the sliver lords are. Uh, obviously it's a legendary sliver, and this one's kind of unique where it has an ability called Cascade, and it also gives all other slivers Cascade. And basically what Cascade does is that when you cast a spell, you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that has a less that, that that costs less so a less mana value so if you cast a five mana value spell you flip over cards until you get to a non-land four or less mana value card and then you get to play that for free uh you may cast it without paying its mana cost obviously and then put the exiled all the other exiled cards that you didn't cast on the bottom of your library in a random order so it's pretty self-explanatory after that so you basically get free cash spells now one thing you should know for the cascade abilities the spell that is cascaded enters the battlefield first because it gets put on the stack last and as we know when you cast spells on stack the th last thing that was uh, that is going to, that was cast will be resolving first so remember that and keep that in mind when you are playing this deck so now that we know what the commander does let's go ahead and go over the deck the way that I do it so the first thing we're gonna do is as I always do we're gonna start off with the land section so let's go ahead and get started on that and I'll show you what I included so with the first sliver being, and the sliver deck in general being a five color deck, we're going to start off with some things that actually help you be able to cast the things in your deck because you're in five colors. So we start off with the command tower as always. Any deck that's beyond one color should always have a command tower. Then we're going to get a little cheeky and we're going to put in Path of Ancestry and Unclaimed Territory. Path to Ancestry is pretty cool. It comes in play tapped and you can tap it to add a mana of any color to your, of your commander's color identity, which in this case is all five colors. And then when a mana is spent to cast a creature, which all you're going to be doing is most likely casting creatures, you get to scry one. Unclaimed Territory is sort of similar, so it comes in play and you choose a creature type, and either taps it out of colorless, or you can tap it to add a mana of any color, and you can only ca use that mana to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So, good additions for this kind of deck. Next we have Exotic Orchard. Exotic Orchard taps to add a mana of any color that an opponent's land could produce, and in a 5 color deck and a 4 man pod, that should actually help you out immensely. We're going to go with uh, Cave of Temptation next, and after that we're going to go to Guild Mages Forum. Both of them are something I started doing recently, and it is that they are filter lands technically. They all come into play, they both come into play and tapped, and then you can pay one and tap it to add a color of any mana, uh, a mana of any color to your mana pool, and that's useful in a five color deck. It's a recent change I've made. I started using them in three plus color decks to kind of help fix the mana. They're a little slower than other things, but they definitely help out when you need it, especially when you have other ways to tap ma or produce mana, which I'll go into in the creature section. In continuing that Filterland theme, the next four are Opal Palace, Painted Bluffs, Shimmering Grotto, and Unknown Shores. All of them come into play untapped. They add a colorless mana right away, and then they can tap, uh, pay one tap and add one mana of any color. And as you can see, Opal Palace has a second ability. So you can go ahead and read that, and we'll move on to the next section of lands, which are sort of similar, but not exactly. As you can see here, I went with a Holdout Settlement and a Survivor's Encampment. Again, they come into play untapped. And then, instead of paying one, you can actually tap it and tap an untapped creature you control to add one mana of any color to mana pool. Kind of gets around having to pay more mana for basically filtering the land from a colorless to a color. So, those are the lands that I've chosen that are not basic lands for this deck so far. As far as the actual basic lands go, I decided to go with a normal, you know, a five of each basic land type. Just so you can kind of have a good variety of lands coming into play that you need. So, that's the land section in a nutshell. We're going to move on now and we're going to go into the ramp section. And thankfully we're in green, so it's just, there's some good options there. Bear in mind we are on a budget, so I had to go with the budget ramp options. And I forgot to tell you the price. The price of the deck was $80 total. So, the ones that I chose were Ramp of Growth because it's 2 to cast. Cultivate, Deep Reconnaissance, and Far Wandering because those three get multiple lands that you can go ahead and fetch. Put one into play, one into your hand, or something like that. It's depending on which one you've gotten out. So, that's the first set of ramp options. 
and then we go into uh, primal growth a search for tomorrow because you can actually cast it for one uh, but you have to put time counters on it and then a migration path because it goes and gets multiple lands as well and puts them into play there are other options that we can go into as well we've got some mana rock options we're going to go with an arcane signet because it can tap to add a man of any color and then we're going to try something a little different here i got a card in here called mystic skull and it actually is a little different and i'll explain so it's two to cast and then it acts like one of the filter lands where you can pay one and tap it to add a mana of any color but then it also flips you can pay five tap it and flip it and when you flip it it makes it so that all your lands now tap to add a mana of any color i chose that because of that ability i don't really care about the front side it's the back side where you can make your lands tap for any mana a mana of any color so that's a great option just for on a budget and lastly we're going to have a commander sphere because it taps for a mana of any color and then if you don't need it you can just sacrifice it to draw a card which is a benefit always so next we're going to move on to the creature section which is the meat of the deck it's where m what most of the cards are going to be earlier i had mentioned that there is another way to fix the mana for this deck since it's five colors these two slivers are the ones that do it it's gem hide sliver and mana weft sliver now one of them says yours and the other one says all slivers they gain the ability to tap for a mana of any color and that's how you're going to fix the mana for a five color deck in sliver form uh, they are the most most important or integral part of the deck so anytime that you have a chance to get them in play quicker take it so if you have tutors that you want to add to the deck you can go ahead and do so just to go ahead and get one of these out in play next up we're going to do some anthem slivers and by anthem i mean basically buff slivers so we're going to start off with these six we're going to do sinew muscle and predatory sliver and predatory sliver I'm sorry, all three of those slivers buff all slivers and give them a plus one, plus one bonus. There is Sedge Sliver, which gives a plus one, plus one bonus to all slivers if you control a swamp. And there's the added bonus on the Sedge Sliver of giving them the ability to regenerate for paying a black. Then we have the Might Sliver, which gives plus two, plus two to all slivers. And then we have the Megantic, which gives plus three, plus three. So all great options and good uh, helps for the deck and makes your uh, slivers a little bit beefier. Up next, we have Blade battle and cleaving sliver they also give a buff to your creatures your sliver specifically but they are only for the offensive side of it and then after that we have the defensive side of it which are going to include watcher plated sliver and steel form sliver so those are nice little defensive buffs to your uh, slivers then you've got other slivers that give you different types of bonuses so we've got these four and they all give uh, all slivers first strike then you've got after that You've got haste enablers like blur sliver, heart sliver, and cloud shredder sliver. But cloud shredder gives the bonus of also giving flying, as do the pulmonic and wing slivers give flying as well. So good options there. They help make you have evasion for your uh, slippers. Venom sliver gives all your slivers death touch, and toxin sliver gives quasi death touch. It's not exactly death touch, but it's a form of it. It doesn't actually have the ability of death touch, but it's close enough. Clot Sliver and Poultice Sliver give slivers regeneration abilities. One does it for themselves, and the other one makes it so other slivers can actually regenerate other slivers. Then we have Stentinel Sliver, which gives all slivers vigilance. Battering Sliver, which gives all slivers trample. And Two-Headed Sliver gives all slivers menace, so it makes them a little harder to block. So the next couple of slivers are not your basic slivers. They don't just give a regular ability, uh, so I'll explain them So up next is cautery sliver it gives your slivers the uh, following ability it says all slivers have you can pay one and sacrifice this permanent and it this permanent will deal one damage to any target and then it also gives all slivers have one sacrifice this permanent prevent the next one damage that would be dealt to target player planeswalker or sliver or creature this turn so a little unique or ability it's not like a regular just vigilance ability or a trample ability it actually does you know something a little different then we have constricting sliver this one gives all slivers the uh, ability that they uh all slivers you control have when this creature enters the battlefield. You may exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. Basically, they are a prison style, or they they, they basically are like a uh, a prison effect on a sliver. Or it gives all your slivers that effect. And then, of course, we have Crystalline Sliver, which is probably the mo one of the more expensive non-rare slivers in the game. It gives all of your slivers shroud which means even you can't target them but it's okay they all have built-in abilities that don't target anyway so good option always always a good option in a sliver deck monetarily expensive but a good option diffusion sliver essentially gives all of your slivers ward two which means that the anytime they're targeted you counter that spell unless the controller pays two enduring sliver gives all of your slivers outlast two and you can read that on the card if you need to and then the first sliver chosen gives all of your creatures exalted, which means uh, if they attack alone, they get plus one, plus one for each instance of exalted in play. 
harmonic sliver. It makes it so that all slivers have when this permanent enters the battlefield. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, so great defense there. Or should I say, some utility there. Hibernation Sliver gives all slivers the ability to pay two life and return it to it, your, its owner's hand, which is good for saving them if there's a situation where there's a board wipe. And then Homing Sliver gives each sliver uh, Sliver Cycling 3, which to explain that it means basically you pay three, discard the card in your hand, and then you can go search your library for a sliver card and then put it in your hand and shuffle your library. So, not a bad ability. It helps you go get those mana slivers like Mana Weft Sliver. So it's a great card to help you go ahead and get what you need. Lava Belly is a helpful uh, version of a sliver. It helps you end the game. It gives all sliver creatures you control have when they enter the battlefield. They can deal one damage to target player or planeswalker and you gain a life. So it helps to get extra damage in when you can't attack. Necrotic is actually a really good one. Uh, all slivers gain. You can pay three, sacrifice this permanent, and destroy target permanent. So it's good board remo or targeted removal. It's really good, especially in commander because you, know, you, you have to be able to destroy a lot of different things. And then spite, Spiteful Sliver. It's a good one. Uh, sliver creatures you control have whenever this creature is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player or planeswalker. So again, it helps to, if you can't attack, you can do damage otherwise and still be able to kill your opponent. So it's a good option. And then finally, to end the creature section, they are not slivers, but they count as slivers because they both have changeling. You have Masked Vandal, and you have Mirror Entity. Masked Vandal is good utility, it helps destroy stuff. And then of course Mirror Entity, so it changes the base power and toughness of your slivers, so making things that are already beefy even beefier. Remember that the buffs are after their base power and toughness, so it's a good option, especially in a deck that's very heavy on creatures, and this one really is. And now we have everything else, and I say that because sliver decks are normally very heavy on the creatures, specifically on the sliver side. So we're going to go over the very few but very helpful cards that are left. We start with things like Lead the Stampede, Garrick's Uprising, and Reconnaissance Mission. And the reason for those three cards is they are very helpful in getting cards in your hand. Uh, one of them puts cards in your hand, the others draw cards. So extremely helpful you're going to be doing a lot of damage you're going to have big creatures and then obviously lead the stampede puts them in your hand if as many creatures as you know up to five if that's what comes off the top if you're lucky enough so card draw is the first part of the everything else section it's very important you need to have fuel to actually get all of your creatures out and play even though you you have a commander with cascade you still need to be able to draw cards and put them in your hand Next is a couple of utility cards. So Rhythm of the Wild gives all of your creatures Riot, which basically says that non-token creatures you control come into play with either haste or a plus one plus one counter. Then you have the Fuse card Ready and Willing. Uh, you can choose to either do either half or both if you pay the cost. The Ready side makes all your creatures indestructible, and then you can untap each creature you control. And the Willing part gives all your creatures Death, Touch, and Lifelink until end of turn, which can be very useful. You could swing the game very well. And then we have War Storm Surge, which says that whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target, which obviously can help you end the game, especially if you've got a lot of buff uh, of the Anthem style slivers out, they can come into play very large, and then you can actually just start slinging damage at your opponent, so a good option. And finally, for all you super sleuths out there, you'll notice that that was 98 cards total. There are two more cards that are in the deck. However, they're cards that the customer actually had on hand on them, so I did not include them. They are Cascading Cataracts and the Sliver Hive Lord to give all of his uh, slivers indestructible. And again, I didn't have them. They already had that, so I did not include them in the deck. So they put them in when they got the deck finally. So that is the deck. That is a Blues Budget Battle Brew. It was a custom build for, for a customer who asked for a sliver deck using the first sliver as the commander. Slivers are a lot of fun. A lot of people like to play them. They're probably one of the more fun and overpowered tribes in the game. So hopefully the person who got it is having fun with it. So with that being said, this was my first time doing an all-digital video. Hopefully it came out well. And if not, please uh, let me know what the quirks were with it. It was not easy to do. I was expecting it to be a lot easier, and it was not. So I'd like to improve it, somehow make it easier for me. Uh, but other than that, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, otherwise, or you just want to talk about the deck, here's how you can contact me. On Facebook, it's bluebearsgames.online. Uh, facebook.com obviously uh, you can email me at bluebearsgames at gmail.com or you can leave a comment in the section below of on this video and we'll go ahead and have a conversation there on top of that that's also the way you can get a hold of me if you want a custom build or a pre-con build which i do have as well i do multiple different ways i can do a pre-con where i build it without any input and if you like it you can buy it 
and then you can do a custom build where you can set your price. My pre-cons are 40 plus shipping, and then of course the custom builds are whatever you're willing to pay, and then I'll try to put that, put the deck together the best as I can. With that said, that is my time for the week. Please do me the favor, like the video. This one was a little harder to put together, so I would appreciate the like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. I don't know why you wouldn't. There's plenty of content on here and much more to come. And then share this video out to somebody who's looking to make maybe a budget version of a sliver deck. Or if somebody who's looking to have a build like this done, they can contact me and I can see if I have the uh, cards in stock to make something like this again. So other than that, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. And I will see you all next week.